I give it over to Fabian Volstetter with Luxo. Let's welcome him to the stage. Woo! Hello, hello. Yeah, so I'm happy that I can start my presentation with Hello World. I always wanted to start my presentation with Hello World. Um, and this time, actually, I have no, no slide about me because I think most people know me, or at least you're using the tools I have built. And you can read that in the corner there if you are not, not knowing who I am. I want to start this with statements. In fact, two statements. One statement, about, they're both about the future. And one statement is, I think 2019 will be about the Web3 UX. It will be about finally moving forward to extreme easy usability and those, those kind of things. And the more bold prediction is actually, I think 2020 we are going mainstream. I think this is when then the use cases come that people start using it, not knowing that they're using a blockchain, but getting a lot of benefit out of it. But there's also problems. And what are those problems? Um, and there are actually two main problems with blockchain, uh, besides a few others with scalability. But the, the main problem for the user is that he needs gas. And most people, or needs ether, needs to pay for gas. And most people don't even want it, know what it is. You know, they, they, they want to use an application, or they want to transfer tokens, suddenly they need something. They have no idea what it even is. And the second problem is that everything currently is on keys. Everything being on keys means all of your assets, everything is on keys. And that makes it very hard to manage because you need to back up things and you have to import and export private keys and all of those things. And that makes it hard to use. A year ago, or it's a bit more than a year ago, 2017, I proposed a standard which was rather complex, um, but it stirred a discussion around how identity on the blockchain or an identifiable uh, account on the blockchain could look like. And uh, it was actually stored so much discussion that we have an alliance which formed around that with a lot of projects saying they want to use it and so on. And it was all great. The problem is it was not really adopted because of its complexity and because of uh, a few other things. So what we did is we came up with a version two of it. The good thing is if standards are in draft, you can change them. <laughs> and uh, that is actually something we should do more often because it seems like once there's a standard, somebody else wants to propose the counter standard and we have a standards war. So let's rather discuss on one standard and let it evolve. ES75 is, is a thanks to Taylor because he, he helped like a redefining everything. I just heard that he now wants to study medicine and doesn't want a software development anymore. So that's unfortunate. <laughs> but it's all open standards anyway. Um, the core of ES75 version 2 is exactly this. It's extreme simple and it's extreme uh, short, in fact. And the beauty of good standards, which are easy to adopt, is if they are simple. ESC20, uh, which I proposed a few years back, was extremely simple, and that's probably one of the reasons why everybody started adopting it. So note here, there's an execute function in this contract. So you can actually talk through your contract. So an ESC7 to 5 contract is, is basically a smart contract. The good thing about smart contracts or any kind of addresses on Ethereum is that they can hold assets. They can hold ethers, they can hold tokens, they can hold NFTs, and they can hold whatever you know, we invent in the future. The beauty here is that smart contracts can be owned. They can have an owner or somebody who controls them. And if you externalize that owner, you have a lot of benefits. You can make it owned by a private key. And um, if you want to have an easy user experience, your wallet can just generate a private key for you without that you really have to bother where it sits or what it is. If you want to make that actually more usable, you could send this private key even via email. And for many of the use cases we have today with dApps, that's actually not a big deal because there's no real value in them. It's purely your identifier. If you then have value at some point on your profile, you probably want to replace keys and have a more complex key management system. You want to have like different keys for different purposes, and you want to make sure that 
uh, you replace your email key for sure <laughs> with one which you are now have backed up and, and encrypted. But the beauty when you have this outside of the actual account which carries all your things is that you can have relay transactions. So meaning you can have somebody else sending to the transactions for you to the blockchain and paying the gas for you and you're still 100% in control because you are owning the keys in your key manager. The key manager is the contract which controls your ES75 proxy account. So basically we have a manageable account and now we have a manageable account which can have, have all kind of management rules and can be as complex and as simple as we want. But the other benefit is I can have a lot more things on this account. I can attach information to this account. Attaching information to this account basically means that I could have all kind of self claims I can attach to my, my profile. But I can also link to any kind of registries, be it claim registries, being off chain storages or whatever, which I can use and reference, or whatever reputation systems we come up with. And uh, so far, we actually have not even dived the route down to reputation systems, uh, interesting enough. Um, but they will come, and you want to attach those also to your accounts, to your user profile, to use, in order to gain a uh, reputation over time. And it's basically unlimited, whatever we can attach. Here we have a key value store. A key value store means basically any kind of information can be attached and is extremely simple. This brings us to a manageable and a verified account. And that's kind of core to our blockchain experience we have so far uh, because everything right now it always turns around keys. The great thing with all of this is we have an execute function, meaning we can talk to every other smart contract and we can it, it be our gateway to the decentralized world. So to take this back <laughs> one step and to don't defend Uport and all of the others <laughs> in the identity space, ES75 is not necessarily your identity. It's your profile. It's your proxy account. It's an account you use to interact with the blockchain that doesn't necessarily need to be attached to you as a person uh, or anything. It can be simply something you use, an avatar, or in fact more important for companies and things to interact on chain. So like I said, it's your, it's your gateway to the decentralized world. If you want to have identity stuff, you probably will go with what the W3C has, has done, which is verifiable claims, and you want to have things off chain and, and all of these personal private data uh, secure somewhere else. And there's a lot of nice methodologies which don't need blockchain. But if you want to interact with the blockchain, we want to interact on the blockchain, right? So we need to talk uh, to the blockchain in some form. So this is kind of like the summary, very simple. Uh, changed up the whole ESO 7 to 5 uh, thing to a more simple version. Uh, now it's totally extensible, whatever it will be used for, whatever can be attached. It's like, you know, up to people to evolve. But we can make user experience a lot easier. We can make it extremely simple for people to get started with blockchain, not really needing to deal with keys or any of those things, and still have a reusable account where they can manage their things and um, don't have to fear that they immediately lose all of their values just because they forgot like, to write down 12 keys while they were setting up a wallet in a, in a um, um, train or wherever they were just been and didn't have their paper with them, right? So we can make it easier and we can hide these kind of complexities. So if you want to go check, there it is. And uh, please participate and discuss. And this, this hackathon is probably a great place to try it out and you know, build around these kind of concepts. Thank you.